to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. It is your host, Brent Daniels, and this is a extra special episode this week because uh, this week we're going to be talking about pre-qualifying, like really, really deep dive in the pre-qualifying process of going on an appointment. And there is no one better in the country to talk to about this. Nobody better to ask questions and really deep dive this than Mr. Rafael Cortez, who by the way, has gone on over a thousand seller appointments because he used to be uh, the head acquisition manager for Sean Terry's business here in Phoenix. So right. say hello to everybody. Hello. Thank you very much for having me, man. I appreciate it. Now, they challenged me to do this. Um, Rafael's full name is Rafael Guadalupe Cortez Ramos. So that's the full name, yes. right? Okay. You even rolled your R's very far. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> but honestly, this is an incredible this is an incredible opportunity because you don't do this a lot. You have spoke on stage, but you haven't done a lot of interviews. Maybe in the future you will because uh, you've got some really exciting things coming out. But I want to get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> so just, just getting into this, um, Rafael was a former firefighter. Then you started your own business. And then he got into real estate and was smart. He let somebody else do the marketing, pay for the marketing while you got the experience. And then after that, you were able to start your own business. Is that right? Right. I like to think that I got the best of both worlds. So I, I, um, when I really went into it heavy or you know, decided to commit to real estate, um, I, I got the opportunity to go into Sean's office and, and just you know, be part of that operation. I mean, that was huge in itself. So. Yeah. And we're talking like... 25 appointments a week off the bat on average i was looking i was sitting down with about five people a day a day a day and these were were people who were you know pre-screen qualified there was a there was i mean a lot of budget going into the marketing so i was able to catch you know the the closing side of that right um and and yeah i mean those were semi pre qualified leads and, and they were all good people to talk to and just start you know to get that experience. So here's the experience that I think we run into and if you're listening or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, it's Brent Daniels uh, Real Estate on YouTube, uh, you can check it out. Um, the, the important thing, uh, something that I see common with people that are starting out in the business or even people that have a successful business and they bring on new acquisition managers is they run a run to these appointments like right away, right? right? They Without qualifying and then all of a sudden people are running to these appointments that aren't qualified and they're not getting the contract signed or they're, they're sitting down with people that'll never do business with them, which is a huge, huge, huge mistake because you run around, the more that you're in your car or at somebody's house that's not gonna sign a contract, the less you're able to uh, pick up the phone and, and, and TTP them and phone prospect them and, and get leads or follow up on the leads that you're getting from traditional marketing, right? right? Yeah, exactly, on point. So, so there's a couple of things with that. Um, <clears throat> there, I mean, the first off, what you wanna, when it, if you're starting in the business, the, the most adequate thing to do is to start thinking about reverse engineering your business and how to get out of it. Um, I was just put in a, in a very particular situation where I, where, where I could afford to go on all those appointments. Right. So even if I saw something when I was running the, uh, the, uh, the lead and looking at the, uh, you know, before going on the appointment, if I saw that it, wasn't, it probably wasn't going to close, right. I was still playing. I was still playing in the game. So yeah. to me, every sit, every sit down with a seller was just another practice run. Right. And I wanted to you know, stack those up and see how I could come out and get better and improve you know, from that. However, when you're when you're running your own business and and your marketing budget is it's you know can be limited, it it's you have to focus on production rather than right. you know just you know kind of throwing spaghetti on the wall. So I mean that that's huge. Well, and I mean so just just to kind of give us a um, you know background on it. So a lead came in whether it's totally pre qualified or not. You're going on that appointment, right? Right, because yeah. you wanted the experience and you were doing it full time. And you were, I mean, you were getting enough deals to where you were able to, you know, yeah. get income. Yeah, absolutely. You know, make money off yeah, of it. Yeah, I was doing very well. Yeah. As an acquisition guy, you know, with percentage and, 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 um, and you know, that pay structure. So, so to me, every, every time I went into an appointment, I would see it as, as conscious lear uh, learning. So I would walk out of there and think, okay, how can I, how could I have close this guy? Right. Or how can I recognize somebody who's not going to do business with me at all next time? So mm -hmm. when the time comes, you know, I can, uh, you know what, let it, you know, throw it into a follow-up as opposed to driving clear cut across the valley to, mm -hmm. you know, to meet that seller. So, yeah, I mean, just being aware of all that stuff as you're coming in, as you're prepping yeah. for the appointment, 
it's gonna save you a bunch of money. It's gonna save you a bunch of headaches. It's gonna yeah. stress. Yep. And you know anything that adds up to that. So. so did you bring anything on these appointments, or was it just you there building rapport, going on it? Because I know that there's a lot of different strategies to this. You can bring comparables. You can bring. Um, you know, a checklist and go through all the things that are going on, you, you know, all the problems with the house and you can talk to the seller with that and negotiate that way and try to get some sort of price. Did you do that or were, was it just, hey, I'm going in, understanding kind of what's going on here and we're close. Now I got to get them, push them over the edge to get the contract signed at a price that makes sense. <clears throat> um, that's in a nutshell, I guess that's, that's uh, the nuts and bolts of the whole thing, right? But I never, I never went into an appointment where I didn't know my scenario. That's yeah. that was the biggest thing, um, doing the, the legwork on the back end. So it's not just the hour that you spend at the appointment. I mean, back then I was still running all the analysis by hand, so I had to know the market. I had to spend time, you know, running the comps, yeah. doing all that stuff, and yeah. getting prepped, right? More than anything, getting prepped for for the questions that could pop up, um, because those are going to make or break a deal. So. So prepping for it, when I would, I mean, when what I would do to come into an appointment, I would, you know, the first thing that I would that I would just wrap my head around was, okay, if this is not a wholesale deal, mm -hmm. and my wholesale offer doesn't go through, I mean, what can I turn it into? Got it. Um, and then can I pivot into, you know, an option? Can I, you know, pivot that into a seller financing deal? If it doesn't go, can I, you know, pivot into a lease option? Yeah. Or, you know, can I? offer a listing and, and then if nothing panned out it was kind of like a by the time by the time i got there i had all my numbers lined up um i had my waist transition from one offer to the next yeah and that's why the closing ratio was high yeah i really good I, I still have a really good closing ratio because it's it's not a one-way track you know it's a you have different you know routes that you can take throughout the appointment and when you're meeting down and you know you've done the legwork um you know that how to pivot from one to the other that's yeah. when the the revenue is going to kick in so if you go to an appointment and it's not a wholesale i mean the wholesale offer does not work doesn't mean it's a dead lead and then you move on um you still have that conversation you build that rapport you become the go-to guy for that person yeah and then you know you transition from one one option to the other next thing you know you have three or four things that you could pot uh, potentially do and then what happens i kid you not i mean you can ask uh you know people that I used to work with it i would get houses you know for free on seller financing, right? Like literally, just yep. you know, yep. closing costs. We'd assume the property, and then we'd sell that seller financing deal. Yeah. I mean, but if I didn't know how to pivot and structure it that way, I mean, those profits would have got it. So you been. you like mentally have like a matrix <clears throat> in your head that says, yeah. okay, it's not a wholesale. Here's my other three options. Okay, it's not. A, they right. don't want to do a seller financing because they owe too much or whatever. So right. we're going to go to we're subject to two, or we're going to go to a wrap, or we're going to go to uh, a lease option, right? If it's an right. FHA loan or whatever. And 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 and, um, and if not, maybe it's a listing, right. right? I mean, really, I mean, here's the thing: it's not rocket science, right? There's only there's only uh, you know probably four or five, let's call it six, maybe at the most options when you're on there. Mm -hmm. Which option fits, and does this person want to go with that option? Right. Right. So we can't do this. I understand you want to do this type of thing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't do any of that. I'm telling you right now. I don't. I, guys, I don't <laughs> do any of that. I wholesale only. I don't care. I, I understand that there's a <clears throat> lot of of seller financing and lease options and subject tos. This guy is definitely uh, more in tune with understanding those processes and getting those locked up. I just look for big, fat, juicy deals, which obviously you do too. I get it. Yeah. You're, just, you're just a lot smarter than fun. I am truly. Uh, no, honestly, I just, you know, I think that especially when you're starting out in the business, I think you need to focus on, on, on right. just wholesaling. I really do. At least sourcing deals that have equity, okay? Uh, now, once you start getting, once you start going on all these appointments and, and somebody has, and either you or somebody has uh, a big pool of money that they can market with, or if you're being, if you want to keep a bunch of your money, you just pick up the phone and cold call them. Um, TTP. Then TTP, baby, that's TTP, right. TTP, baby. Um, then, then you can start transitioning into uh, you know some of those other options and learning about those other options. But starting out, get wholesale deals, get wholesale deals, get wholesale deals, get your bank account going. Learn the other stuff, absolutely. I mean, how did you learn? Um, honestly, I didn't get good at it until I was maybe a year, year and a half into it. Right. So I did start going off of just you know straight up wholesale, wholesale. This mm -hmm. was it. This was it. And then um, the market started started getting a little bit more competitive, sure. and then, you know margins a little tighter. Yep. You know because I mean we did see deals that you know came across our, 
our desk that were a hundred thousand dollar deals, and then those kind of started, you know, fading away a little by little. But so, so I mean, I just looked for different ways as experience kicked in. Yeah. I would talk to people, and then weird. Um, <laughs> I would talk to people, you know, at, at conferences, and, and you know, talk about different strategies. And yeah. I, I've always liked that sort of thing. I like I like figuring out. Um, you know solutions, right? Yeah. Not just for 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 the other person, but okay, how could it work? You know, good for me. How can it work well for them sure. based on the conversation yeah. going? Yeah. So, but yeah, for any of that to happen, it doesn't matter if it's one strategy or you have you know four. It you still have to you know I know the it. back end of the yeah. deal. If it's a land deal, if yeah. it's a commercial, if multifamily, single families are always good to kind of. Um, you know, plant your roots in. Yep. That way, I mean, that well, they're the easiest know. to sell. It's the biggest pool of buyers, right? right? So if you want to get success early, mm -hmm. you go for single family or land. I mean, land's pretty easy to sell too. Yeah, I like right? to think to, to think about it this way. Once you once you venture out of single family uh, SFR, I mean, you're you're kind of taking the, the training wheels off of the right. of the bike. Yep. And you know, stuff gets a little different. I mm -hmm. mean, comps get a little harder. You have crazy deals, you know, left and right. Yep. And, and so that happens, but it's just a matter, it's all part of the transition, right, going into it. So prepping for the deal, um, <clears throat> I guess to, to make it a little bit, you know, pragmatic, it's, um, I, I look at I look at the comps and the, the way that I run the comps, I, I look at, you want me to go into that stuff? Yeah. Okay, cool. So the way that I run the comps, for example, when I'm analyzing a deal, um, I look at no, you know, no wider than a mile. Yep. I usually stick within half a mile. Sure. Uh, within 300, 300 square feet. Either you know up or down from the subject plus or property. minus of the size of the house, right? Yeah. And then uh, within ten year built. Yep. Uh, of course, you know. So if it's built nineteen eighty, you're going from nineteen seventy to nineteen ninety. So a ten year on e either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they never go across um, geographical uh, boundaries. For example, like big rivers because mm -hmm. or train tracks or stuff like that. Because a lot of times, you know, the price points change dramatically you know from yep. one, in a, in a even period. major streets sometimes right yeah um we have that here in downtown phoenix it's i mean oh, yeah. yeah you look at 7th avenue and then you look at you know 15th avenue 15th yeah. avenue and, and the price just drops so you right. can't really do apples to apples there but but knowing those areas i mean goes a long way yeah so i run my comps i get a bunch of comps and then um oh you know of course whenever whenever it uh, one, one thing that i love doing is is or when i even now when i still go to appointments I'll look at the comps, and I don't really print them out. I, I went paperless a long time ago, but yeah. but what I do is, is I pull up. We have a system here in uh, Monsoon. I mean, it's it's really it's a really great tool. So you you pop it up, and then you can do Zillow. You can do you know whatever you have in your in your your area. But I, uh, I use um, Monsoon, and it just pops up with the sold comps, right? Sold mm -hmm. comps, and and I'll look at it right there when I'm talking to the seller, and we're talking about price points and values. We'll start looking at the comps. But at this point, I already I already took a look at the market area, and I you know I know where you know where I can what my comps are, what my values are, so I'm yeah. prepped for it. Yeah. But there, there's this just I mean there's this thing about being able to do it live in front of the in front of the seller mm -hmm. that you know creates this whole sense of, of collaboration between between the two of you. So. Yeah. So that's one thing. I go in with the comps. Um, when I start negotiating, I, I hardly ever dive right into uh, right into you know the offer. I mean, I, I build rapport, and I'm I'm big on behavioral tendencies and and uh, and, and uh, profiles. That's where the whole organizational psychologist thing kicks in. Um, so I mean, I think that's that's for example one of the biggest tools that has been uh, allowed me to close the amount of deals that I've yeah. So I'll I'll come in and then just see what the setting is with that seller, and then tailor and frame my conversation around this, the seller's way of, communica of course. communication. So, love it. Um, yeah, I, I love that. it, yeah. Um, and of course, do the walkthrough. As you're going through the walkthrough, you look at um, details of the property. And this is probably you know, pretty basic stuff. I mean, you, you start looking at pictures. You start looking at, you know, are, they, are there boxes in the hallways? And, and just anything that can key you into the back end of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you go into a house that's perfectly pristine, right? Right, everything's put away and it's in good shape. You're like, okay, this is, yeah. this is not a wholesale. What deal. am I? What am I doing here? Right, yeah. right. But you go there so. and the ceiling's coming down. There's obviously a leak. There's some boxes right. around. There's piles of you know mail everywhere, newspapers or right. whatever. I mean, you're kind of getting a sense of some distress here, and then you're pulling it out as you're as you're as you're communicating. With yes, them. exactly. So all those. Do are you when when you before you go on the appointment, what information are you getting from them, or it, was it just hey you got an appointment this date, at this time go, or was it hey 
I'm going to call and confirm and ask them some questions and pre-qualify. There's, there's a series of questions and I have like, to date, I, that's what I built into my operating system. Um, so it's, it's, we have, I think about five or six questions that are open-ended questions. Yep. Um, when we first make contact with them over the phone yeah. or whenever the acquisitions or lead gen guy, you know, whoever they, uh, they, they talk to initially. Yeah. Um, we or have six questions. Have example. To yeah. For example, um, I mean, one of them is, is, uh, can you tell me, what can you tell me about the property? So, I mean, that's not, um, it's an open ended question. Yeah. I mean, they can tell me, you know, they bought it back in 1960 and yeah. it needs a roof, yeah. it needs this, that, or it's, you know, good to go. So, I mean, that's an open-ended question. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do have a couple of ones. Uh, for example, um, I do try to get the price out of them. I mean, that's one of the things that, that we just kind of pivot around. Yeah. Um, so if I had, for example, if I had one check to pay the mortgage, what, you know, what would be the second check to give to you? Yeah. Uh, and then you have an idea of... of Great. You know what they want to cash out. Yeah. So it's just another way of asking. I mean, pay off everything. Property. Right. You know, how, how, you, big, how, how much do you want to walk away from? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you want? Yeah, well, I do need. Walk with, yeah. I do. How much do you need, need. to walk away with? Ah, great. Um, I love it. And, and that's NLP stuff into the script. So sure. all kinds of little hacks in there. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just framing those questions in, in a way that they're open. And then they're, what happens is that after two or three of those, I mean, you can put together a story mm -hmm. over the phone. Yep. By the time you get there to that to the property, um, you already you already have an idea of what the behavioral tendency of the seller is, mm -hmm. and and you can you know structure and frame your conversation based on that. Love it. So if it's somebody, for example, who's a high driver, you do it you know quick and easy. You go you know straight to the topic and don't really dabble a lot with details. Yep. Um, rather than the bottom line, and yep. then you know or you know move around whatever whatever it is that you know. That applies, right? Yeah. So, yeah. If that's, it's an analytical personality, you bring the data, right? You bring the data, you sit down, and then you lay it, you know, all that, and you take your time. If and it's somebody that's sweet and wants everybody to feel good, you talk about the feelings, you talk about, you know, how do you feel about this? What do you feel is the right exactly. price? What do you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, it, it's, it's uh, you're going to get a sense of, just because the way they frame their their conversation, the way that they talk to you, you're going to get a sense pretty quick whether they're auditory learners, right. visual learners, and then or you can start, yeah. you know, tailoring yeah. your conversation or your, your I don't want to say script because I don't go off of script, but the way that, you know, the, the words that you use, yeah. you, you can, you know, plug them in like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the actual conversation negotiation side of things. Um, but for example, to get him to get, um, to get the prices where I've been able to get my spreads on average of you know twenty twenty five thousand dollars per per wholesale deal, mm -hmm. um, the first benchmark is it's you know knowing the ARV. Uh, for example, if I know that on on the high end I can sell a property um, or pitch a property to an end buyer for that it's worth two hundred thousand dollars, yeah. But my comps are in a range of say one sixty to two hundred, yeah. Which is I mean it's not uncommon. Um, if you can both get to agree that the comps you know. Kind of put the property around you know 180 ARV after yeah. repair value. Yeah. You start negotiating with a twenty thousand dollars spread already into it, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. when you go in, there's there's certain things that sellers are already uh, ready to battle out. For example, mm -hmm. repairs. Yeah. Uh, if you go in, um, I, I'm not a, I, I don't like to to really you know break down the property and, and say you know the property is is it's, it's a you know bunch of crap. Yeah. Um, because they're already they're ready for that battle. Yeah. So they're gonna say, no, the roof was exchanged back in 2010 and this and that. And then they're gonna, what happens is that they're just gonna build up a wall. Yeah. So pick your battles when you're there and you don't wanna, you know, any walls, I mean, yeah, you, you're gonna, for example, if the kitchen is bad, you mention it, you say something, but you don't, you know, tear it down and try to make all your spread on, the, you know, the fact that you need a new kitchen. Yeah. I mean, you try to keep the walls down, you know, steer around the conversation. And, and use you know the the rehab value right so for example if I negotiate it or if we both agree that the property is 180 yeah. and then we both agree that the property needs you know twenty twenty five thousand dollars worth of rehab you know that's another gap that I'm able to build build into it right um, the third one it's it's I actually show the, the the sellers the numbers like the end numbers so for example we sit down um, after you know I throw a, when I'm when I'm getting ready to throw an offer on the table. Um, I'll tell them, I'll show, okay, so this is the ARV, yeah. you know, 180. Yeah. Uh, we have, you know, to do about 20, 25, 30K of worth of rehab, which we're both on the same, you know, by then we're both on the same page. They agree with you on the ARV. They agree with you on how much it costs to repair it. Right. Most of the time, <clears throat> honestly, in my experience, they go way high on yeah, the repair do. costs. Yeah, if it's do. 20, 25, they're like, oh, probably 50,000. Right. Right? Yeah. Because no, honestly, if... if, if <clears throat> If you're if you're just a homeowner 
and you call up whoever contractor mm -hmm. and you're not you know a flipper in the business and getting discounts from Lowe's and Home Depot and getting discounts from your your, your subs yeah. and doing all these things where you can get your costs down to the average person I mean you I, I've had people spend 50 grand on a regular kitchen yeah right yeah let alone the whole house all right you know what I mean? It happens all the time. Go to any of those home shows in, in the big arenas and you'll see, you know, I mean, people spend a ton. So people actually, if you ask them, what do you think it would take to fix it up, unless they're in the contracting business or if they're like, I could do it myself or whatever, typically they go high, which yeah, I think they, is a very powerful question. Yeah, to ask. absolutely. Yeah. So, so, and it's actually, yeah, you're right. It's one of the things that I kick in. It's how much you think it, I mean, the, the property needs yep. when I'm there, when I'm sitting face to face. Yep. Um, that is a pretty objective question. It's yep. going to give me more than anything, a baseline of, of where the mindset is at, right? Yep. And then, you know, build out from there. And then of course you, you want to justify um, your expenses. So for example, if I'm walking, when I did my research on the back end, yeah. to get the number to where I want it to be, yeah. I know how much, in, in in rehab, I need to uh, I need to justify. Yeah. So if I if I, for example if I hit a, a if I need a thirty thousand dollars to get this price to this point, mm -hmm. I know that before I even meet with the seller, and I'm gonna be looking for thirty thousand dollars worth of expenses you yep. know, while I'm walking the house. Yep. Uh, once I get that, I mean I'll, I'll I won't you know I won't if I can you know go higher great. If not, I know that I hit my you know, my benchmark and my numbers are gonna work. So yeah. I stick with the numbers there. Good. Um, Good. So yeah, that's that's where you make another cushion of, of, uh, of spread, and then the third one is showing the numbers. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you have the ARV, and then you know the rehab amount, whatever whatever happened, which tends to be higher. Um, and then I tell them, okay, we're looking for at the end of the day, and I'm thinking I'm putting myself on the end buyer's um, um, shoes, shoes, right? Yeah. Rehabber's shoes. Uh, after they pay for everything, what's a decent return? Decent return. It's yeah. a, you know ten to twelve percent after you I mean, that you clear out from whatever investment you make. By the way, that's in Phoenix, ten to yeah. twelve percent. You tell that to some people in the South or in the Midwest, they're like, yeah. dude, everybody wants thirty percent minimum. So it does change. Depends on where you're watching. Find mm -hmm. out, and typically that has to deal with price points. If it's a lower price point, obviously the percentage of uh, of what somebody wants to make is going to be more. Typically, what I do if it's under one hundred fifty thousand for ARV, I assume that an investor wants to make twenty thousand. Right. Right. So I take I, I start subtracting. I take six percent for selling costs, title and escrow, and realtor right off mm -hmm. the top. So I take ARV times 0.94 minus the the repair cost minus the twenty thousand that they want to make. That's what you should be able to sell it to. Uh, sell it as a wholesale price, and then obviously you got to build in your your profits from there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, that's exactly how the numbers go. And when you line it all up, and then you see it, it makes I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yep. So you started with the 180, and then you have this much in rehab, and then you have the uh, you know this much that we have to account for in expenses at the end of it because we still have to pay brokerages. We, we still have to you know have mm -hmm. all that stuff that they would have anyways mm -hmm. if they sold retail. Um, and then this is how much we're looking to make. Yeah. So saving you the headache mm -hmm. is going to pay us, you know, in whatever market you are, you know, twelve percent or yeah. you know, whatever that yeah. is. Uh, and then you end up with an offer that's very, very justifiable. It's logical. It's, it's. I mean, you put it in front of them, you know, yep. and I work it through an iPad. I have it on my iPad, and it's working on a cool little spreadsheet that I have set up. Yep. Very simple. Yep. Uh, they see that, and it's, it's like, it makes perfect sense. Got it. So. When when you're able to do to kind of stack the uh, the spreads, mm -hmm. not just you know through one punch and then you know going straight for the sixty thousand dollar offer on a two hundred thousand dollar home, yep. and you build it out, I mean, yep. you're gonna end unless up that's with, what they want. Yeah, unless <laughs> unless that's what they the best is when they just give you the price and you don't have to worry yeah. about any of this, yes. right? <laughs> then then just said, you know, yeah, hey, give me seventy thousand, give me a hundred thousand, give me two hundred thousand, give me right. five hundred thousand, it's yours. Yeah. So, okay. Exactly. Right. But most of the time, 90% of the time, honestly, if we're being uh, just, you know, from experience, it's 90% uh, of the time they're going to want to, you're going to have to pull the price out of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then stack it. Just stack the, your spread into a couple of different points yep. during the meeting, during yep. the conversation. Yep. Got it. What else? What I mean, after a thousand, um, after a thousand appointments, what do you think? I mean, go talk to somebody here that... Um, either they are brand new or they're hiring their first acquisition manager. What do you think that they need to know going on their first appointment? Um, or going on their first, you know, 
dozen appointments. I'm going to, I'm going to hit, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to hit entrepreneurship in general here Okay. because I think it applies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go, uh, going on the appointments and get, you know, gaining all that experience, it just comes through time and exposure, right? I mean, the more you get hit, the better you get at dodging it. Yeah. But, um, but it's, it's one thing that I, that I see happening a lot is, is people just trying to micromanage everything when they can, when they, they can start delegating. So it's always good if you're a startup to do uh, to you know focus on the revenue, mm -hmm. focus on the revenue 100%. first, yep. and then focus on your team, and then focus on your systems. I mean that's the the order that it should pan out. Yeah. Um, if you don't have revenue, you can't keep the lights on. If you can't keep the lights on, you don't have a team. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't you know have a team, you can't run any systems. Right. right. So it just kind of trickles down that yep. way. So if you have if somebody is, is brand new, they're coming in. At first, they're, they're going to have to grind it out for a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, I would much rather do that than throw $50,000 into a marketing campaign and say, well, wholesaling is super easy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have somebody just figure out the whole thing for me. Right. Oh, run a couple of deals. Run yeah. through a couple of deals. Yep. See what it is. Get a taste for it yep. if you're running into it before you hire anybody. And then um, when you're able to, to, um, to run your, your, your margins... Anywhere from maybe 20 to 30, 25% somewhere in there, bring in the first hire. Yeah. When you know that you have a cushion. Why? Because th that's, an, and for example, that would be an income generating you know, spot. Mm -hmm. It's either a lead generation or an acquisition. That's it. So, yeah. For yeah. me, it'd be definitely lead, uh, lead gen person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like cold calling. I don't like, I, I like going on appointments and face to face. And I'm good at that, so why would I hire you know an acquisition as a first person? Right. However, if you're you hire a cold call, right? However, you if you're really good on the phone and right. you like that stuff, yeah. then hire an acquisition guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Got so it. think always think about reverse engineering every step, every step that you take, every new new uh, new curve that you're thrown at. Think, okay, how can I pull myself out of this thing next time? Mm -hmm. One thing I do, like every time I, I uh, now to date. If I see a new agreement or there's something new, for the first time I had to file a memorandum, you know, write up a memorandum. Man, I don't want to do this every single time, print it out and then do all that stuff. So what, I, what did I do? I built it into my system so it's a one-click thing. Yeah. And it saves me time now because yeah. I set it up that one time, you know. So well, and Rafael actually, <laughs> I mean, we, I, wanted to get, I, I wanted to get him in here to talk about going on the appointments, what he's learned, and, um, you know, how best to give you the tools so that you can succeed on these appointments. Obviously, pre-qualify as much as possible, especially, and, and I agree with you on, on, on some level that if you're doing this full time and you've got money in your account and you, you're able to um, you know, run around, you, you can focus on lead generation and go on appointments, um, then you can go on some that aren't as qualified as others, but for the most part, you gotta pre-qualify them based on the condition of the property, their timeline to sell, their motivation, and their price. I'm telling you, if their timeline to sell, the second one in that is six months from now, a year from now, whatever, and you go now, it's okay if you think that there's opportunity to sell that thing quicker, because that happens all the time. But if they truly can't sell for a long period of time and you start talking numbers with them now, you're, that number is gonna be leveraged. That number is gonna be leveraged they're gonna say, I got an offer at this price, you know, you gotta beat it type of thing. So really watch out for that. You want people that are ready to sign a contract in the next seven to 10 days. That's a hot lead, okay? Uh, condition, timeline, motivation, price. Get as many of those before you go on the appointment as possible. You talk about asking five questions, open-ended questions before you go out, right? right? So that you can get that combination of those four things, yeah, right? When do you wanna sell it? How much do you want it? How much needs to go into the property, right? And why are you selling, right? Uh, one thing that you mentioned right now, and it's it's really important. Whenever, after you start doing enough, you're gonna start gauging, right? This guy wants to sell. This guy is not gonna sell for three months. This guy, you know, I'm not sure. So I I don't do a concrete offer. I don't. Okay, one right. sixty, boom, and yep. I'll get it right yep. now because I already sized it up. Yeah. Uh, maybe wrong. I don't know, but that's just the way that I process it. What I do is I do a range. Yeah. So, well, I mean, when are you looking to sell? For example, if we want to push it in six months, um, I don't know, I'd be between, you know, 160, I always go a little higher, just so we go back. Yeah. So, I don't know, 170 and, you know, 175, depending on the condition. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of leave it open that way. What you want there, it's, you're not look, so your target at that point is not really closing the transaction, it's just, you know, keeping that seller on the, you know, on the hook, on the hook. you know, for the, for yeah. the time being. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, uh, but so that's all the stuff of the appointments. Raphael <laughs> ventured out uh, a couple years ago. When did, when did you start 
uh, just running it yourself? Um, I love, yeah, uh, Pulse Capital about three and a half years ago. Okay, got it. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it was about three and a half years ago. Two, so, years, Pulse Capital, um, probably a, this guy's a brainiac. I mean, so how many degrees do you have? Uh, two masters. Two masters degrees in uh, psychology. So right. General psychology and then organizational psychology. Right. And listen, this guy's back end processes, his organization for his business. I mean, you're like a one click in your process and all of a sudden everything's out. Right? Uh, yeah, Text messages, exactly. voicemails. I mean, you've yeah. got all your lead, you've got all your. Um, proactive marketing out there and then you're getting calls coming in and responses coming in you've got acquisition managers running it and then you get these deals right right so talk about I mean is this is this is your process is your program available to the public I mean is it available yeah. to certain people is the back end like is this it's, I'm gonna get this. As a matter of fact, I, I mean, you know, it, Raphael yeah. literally is in the office across from me here in uh, on the 19th floor in downtown Phoenix. So right. we talk a lot, we we look a lot in, in, at, at at each other's businesses, and it's really exciting. But t talk about your platform. So I mean, I didn't want to build out a CRM. Uh, I wanted to build something that was actually gonna pull me outside of it so that it would do the, the heavy lifting for right me, you know so the better it is the less people you need to run it the more efficient the more yep. scalable it becomes yeah right? yeah so so I'm up to you know I build it out to a point where where most of the uh, the analysis I'm uh, actually like about 90% of the analysis is done automatically by just by the system itself it yeah. gives you back you know, uh, you know thresholds frames as far as how to pitch the offers and at this point, for example, my acquisition guys, I've had you know, people with no real estate experience, but plug them in and then because they're really good with people, they're good at sales, yeah, they're good yeah, at, you know, they yeah. have that tenacity, right? Yeah. So, so I plug them into the system, they start just following it through. Boom, 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 boom. And it's all linear, right? So it goes from, from um, you know, lead intake and generation to, <laughs> to the acquisition process. And then, you know, they lock it, we get a contract because they click the button. Yeah. So they, everything's, you know, sent out. They get it back and um, you guys. Know, this guy, dispo, this right? guy's platform is a lead comes in, it automatically comps it, right? Yeah. It automatically comps it. It automatically already puts together your um, purchase contract, right? Right. If you want to click it and do that, right? Yeah. You can also do your assignment agreement, um, correct? Assignment agreement, seller financing agreement. Does it set a task for your guys to follow up with this? Lead obviously. Right. Yeah. The way that we have it, I mean, it it, can, it pushes, for example, follow up dates automatically. Yeah. Uh, but they can they can adjust them, and if it fall, you know if it goes beyond the date when they're they yeah. were supposed to follow yeah. up, it'll tag them with a task. Got um, it. Yeah. So there's there's checks and balances built into it. I mean, it's 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 working it's working very well. So incredible. It's working well. Yeah. I gotta I gotta do it. Yeah. Do it. Anyway. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, how do people reach out to you about this? Um, it's not really available. It's kind of like. This is like super secret. Yeah, um, I wasn't. I wasn't even. I mean, th this I, I really wasn't pushing it. But, right. All the all the well, all the major guys here in Phoenix, and you know a lot of them. The the, the cast of characters here in Phoenix have been coming to Raphael for this. And people that are interested in your platform, where how do they reach out to you? Um, you can shoot me an email at rc at thepulsegroup.net. Yep. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm yep. also on Instagram, Rafael yep. Cortez eleven. Yep. And uh, at www.ceopulse.com. CEO Pulse. CEO Pulse, P U L S E.com. And they can just uh, contact you through the. Yeah, they, you go in there and then uh, I also have a toolbox for entrepreneurship yep. um, on there. Uh, yep. Some, you know, some budget, profit, and loss analysis kind of stuff and, and just stuff that can help you out. Stuff that I was looking for when I was starting off in business. Yep. And I couldn't find it anywhere available. So now I just want to you know, awesome. pay it forward. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much for that. That was incredible. So I hope you guys got a lot out of what to do on the appointments. Also, the platform that Raphael has is bananas. It's absolutely bananas. Uh, definitely reach out to him if you are in. It, it is not going to be cheap. So uh, definitely reach out to him if you have a budget and if you're already getting things rolling. Um, that would be the best. Um, th that would be the best opportunity for both of you guys. Um, and if you're interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is the TTP program, wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash 
HTTP. Make sure you scroll down on that page. Check out all the testimonials. Check out what the program's all about. If it feels great, if it feels good in your gut, then definitely sign up for a call. It'll be the best call of your year. Until next time, guys, I encourage you to talk to people. See ya.